So we're just jumping right in here, you beautiful humans, and answering some questions that you had from my previous video, and we're not just gonna be throwing out synthetic benchmarks and calling it good, because we need to provide you with more value for that buying decision when it comes to editing on external drives. And one of the questions that I see pretty often is, but what is the fastest drive? And it really is such a loaded question that requires context because it's not that simple. And you could be paying for tech you don't need or want. However, if you want the synthetic benchmark so that you can just duck out of here, then these are the setups that I am testing. And I have worked with these for quite some time and have relied on them for my work here and outside of YouTube. And you might be asking why the Samsung 970 Evo Plus is slower than the 980 Pro, especially like on that right speed. And there are a combination of reasons that are related to the board and the controllers like in the enclosures. So the board and the controllers in these enclosures and the communication protocol, especially with M1 Max. And I've done several videos on this already, but you may or may not be surprised by today's results that I will share with you. So jumping into this 4K multicam timeline, uh, I'll walk you through what I'm seeing when it comes to this XAVCS footage from the Sony a7 IV. And a lot of this is 60 frames with a roll at 30 and some additional mixed 6400 footage and a, a lot of it actually has corrective LUTs, all of it has corrective LUTs, as well as creative LUTs, transitions, titles, and some of the clips have grain and pretty much a lot of third-party plugins that basically are unplayable on my non-M1 machines. And of course, I am separated this out to we are on the internal. And so you'll see like we get these like peak read and writes at 320 and, and 125, but then we kind of settle down to a read of around 70, 60. I think we'll, we'll see that pop up even to 100. Uh, there it is, just almost touching 100. Right now we're dropping maybe a frame or two at this point because we've got to look at the GPU. It is doing the lifting here. Now, this is on the internal, so we should expect to get more efficiency there when it comes to at least theoretical efficiency. But the, the GPU isn't maxed out, but it is certainly doing that lifting. Now, as we move through the timeline, these, these clips here, and of course, all of this down here, like I said, we drop, we drop a frame, we move, let's see what happens here. We definitely drop several frames just to kind of that buffer as it's loading, but then it's back up to roughly where it needs to be. And as far as the read and write, again, we're hanging at like 47, 52 megs for that read, 63. So again, as you'll see, yes, it's efficient to have like an SSD versus a spinning hard drive, but not a lot of like fast reading and writing occurring. SSDs definitely will have uh, benefits when it comes to transferring very large files. So that'll definitely be something to consider um, checking out that video where I talked about that, and especially when it comes to thermals. But as far as the sensor is concerned, the Apple SSD at 28 degrees Celsius. So not even breaking a sweat, 48 degrees, 47 degrees, 1300 RPMs on this base model M1 Max, and just kind of moving through this timeline. Now, let's show you, let's go to the, how about we go to the 970? Let's load up the 970 here. Evo Plus, that is. Same deal, same timeline, takes a second to like load up. What's happening? So roughly reading and writing the same, at least we're not kind of looking so much at the peak read and write. So let's go ahead and play this. See what's happening here. As far as the frames, initial drop about two frames, three. GPU is lifting up here and we're still dropping a couple of frames. SSD is reading at roughly 80, 100 megabytes per second. Again, this is a Thunderbolt enclosure. So we are going through uh, that, of course, that protocol of 40 gigabits per second, which really isn't truly 40 gigabits per second, but roughly same read. Scroll through. Let's see if we'll drop those frames like when we kind of like scroll. Yep, drops like several frames and then kind of back up to where it needs to be. 
almost close. Yes. So we're, we're, we're roughly kind of where we need to be. We're dropping about a frame or two on the 970 Evo plus still <laughs> the M1 max is just cool. Now the sensor here, 970 Evo plus 54 degrees Celsius at this time. And when we're transferring large files, you will see that shoot up to 80 degrees Celsius easily, or at least pushing the max. Like if you're, if you're transferring large uh, files and folders, you will definitely start seeing that, that limit for that SSD. But for something like this, not so much, because again, it's the GPU that has to process all of this to read and write uh, to that drive. Why don't we go to the slowest one? How about that? The SanDisk. USB-C, this is a thousand rated 1,050 megabytes per second as far as read and write. Let's see what we got here. So we're gonna play, loaded, and the SSD on the extreme, 106, 106 megs, 86, roughly the same. Hanging, the frames are actually looking pretty good. Maybe dropping a frame or a frame. So very efficient there. Might drop a frame or two. Now, as far as the sensor, we don't have that. My stats won't pick up like the temp on that, but I can tell you that, I mean, it's barely warm. But it's hanging. So let's see what happens like when we scrub through. Okay, so we scrub through. We dropped a couple frames, definitely. GPU is not at 100%, but it's dropping a frame or two. Just like I said, it's got it's got to move that along. It's got to push that through, and roughly the same read as it was internal, and in the Thunderbolt enclosure, give or take. But it's hanging. All right, 980 Pro. So we are dropping about a frame, maybe. That seems to be kind of the average here. We had a spike to pushing the GPU at about 100%, but we're dropping about a frame or two. That seems to be a theme. And we are really working 107 megs, kind of moving along like some of the others. I'm sure that will kind of drop. Yeah, it's starting to drop down on that read. Okay, scrubbing through. Playing it again, we drop a frame or two. So just again, this is the context. The GPU is working. Sensor, let's look at that. So the 9A Pro is up to about 56 degrees Celsius, according to the sensors in iStat. But just kind of wanted you to be aware that it's not just like the speed of the SSD and looking at those synthetic benchmarks. All right, let's get a bigger clip here and let's see how that stabilizes. What's the SSD doing here? Yeah, 65 meg, 62. Again, it's because the CPU and GPU are doing that work. There are occasionally times where I will see like uh, a, a transition or some kind of title, some kind of effect that might kind of push up to a couple hundred megs, just depending on how efficient and optimized it is for this machine. But otherwise, that's where your limitations are. All right, so let me just show you an 8K timeline like I did in my previous video. So we're playing through, this is transcoded uh, ProRes, and what you will see as far as the SSD is concerned, we are on the slowest. SSD, the, the SanDisk. Now here's the interesting piece. I haven't really done too much. This is a very simple timeline at up to 11 minutes. You'll see that the read is touching just under uh, 400 megs at times. So we had a peak read of 541. Of course, we are dropping frames like you wouldn't believe um, for a sec there. Yeah, like we're, we're dropping several frames because again, that GPU's got to do that work. Now we're back up but we're working it here to, again, a higher read than we were on that more complicated timeline. Again, because that was over an hour, it had so many effects in there. So that certainly was kind of slowing that process down. So again, 
with a simpler timeline, this is not simple, but just not multicam, you may find that those higher read and write uh, speeds may be advantageous to you, but we are literally on the slowest one here. Okay, now we're on the theoretical faster one as far as uh, the external is concerned. We are on the 980 Pro. 462 on that read, 426. We are, we are at roughly the same when it comes to the theoretical speed of the 980 Pro and of course the quote unquote slowest of the SanDisk. So just keep that in mind. This is where this heavy lifting is happening. This is what is happening. So again, I can, and this is, this is ProRes transcode. I can, I can scrub through it, keep playing through it. We get like a little bit of a blip, a drop frame, but then it's still playing it. And as far as the thermals on the 980 Pro, again, so 58 degrees Celsius, we likely are not going to reach uh, anywhere near that threshold. We're at 60 at this point. Okay, so now we're on the internal, 491, 500. Roughly in the same ballpark, 4, 492. This doesn't change what the GPU and the CPU has to do with this footage. Same deal. 488, again, we're in the same ballpark as the slowest theoretical drive. I keep saying that, but I'm just trying to make a point. So based on what we're seeing here, as much as I do like the SanDisk and I've used it successfully, and you really can pick these up on the cheap, but I do tend to favor the Thunderbolt 3 and USB 4 enclosures. This one, both of these are from Acasis. I also use the fledging Thunderbolt 3 enclosure. Uh, I really like that. Now, I have not reviewed all enclosures. I have not reviewed all Thunderbolt enclosures, and so I cannot give you context of all SSDs, all enclosures. And another thing too is I also have people say, but what about the cable? Maybe if you got a faster cable, it's not the cable. There's a lot that happens with those controllers, the board in the enclosure and the communication protocol that occurs. I've done several videos on this. So I do still like the DIY enclosures because I swap out these SSDs all the time for doing testing. I will also try to link up a Google doc that someone in the community, Pete, had put together for us of some enclosures that he tested with several SSDs because I haven't tested them all. And some of you might be asking, well, I can't get the cases right now or I can't get the fledging. If you can wait, they're, they're fantastic uh, as far as these SSDs and the enclosures. And of course, for those who want some export times here, I will, I will throw those up, but let me just give you context real quick. So a standard, just the default export is a 213 gig file. And that's for this hour long timeline multi-cam. However, I do a compressed 4K that shrinks that down to 17. So when you see these results, this often has to do with the work that is done to compress this down for YouTube. So that's why you're seeing that it's basically for all of the drives. And that is the interesting thing is that it's roughly in real time. So it's just under an hour to render and export all of this footage into that compressed file. All right, hopefully you got some value out of this. Let's get you out of here on this one. Do check out that video. I will link that up when it comes to transfer speeds and especially thermals on these machines. You go out there and rock those faces. I'll catch you right back here on the next one.